my name is Emily Miller and I work at Eastbourne College. I went to medical school in the 90s and after that um, I worked as a junior doctor in various hospitals in South London. So I help uh, pupils who want to go into medicine, into dentistry and into vet medicine and also anybody else interested in a medical career. So I start working with these pupils as soon as GCSEs finish and I get to know them all individu individually and as the weeks go on I, I meet with them all one to one and in that time we discuss their academic progress and we discuss how they're getting on with things like EPQ which I I mentor them for and I help them do research projects and I help them find some work experience. We also have regular uh, Tuesday evening meetings for our pupils and in those meetings we would try and explore the career a bit more widely, Dif different professionals would come and talk to our children so that they can get a really, a really good idea of the pressures, the challenges and the hardships that they're going to face in these careers. That's one of the things that the medical schools especially are looking for, that their applicants have taken time to appreciate what they're letting themselves in for. I think that depends. Uh, our students have to take the UCAT and the BMAT exams, always the UCAT and sometimes the BMAT exams. The dentists have to do UCAT. The vets only need to do the Natsuki exam now if they're going for Cambridge. But sometimes we will use these sessions to prepare for those exams. So this week, for example, I ran a, a meeting on medical ethics related to the coronavirus. And what we were discussing was um, issues like, how do you decide who gets a ventilator when there aren't enough to go around? Or how do you decide if somebody can visit their loved one in hospital when they're dying? You know, what are the, the benefits and the risks involved? And what I really want our pupils to do is just is to learn and to appreciate that there aren't easy right answers and wrong answers here. They've got to, to learn to see how difficult it can be to come to a decision on some of these issues. My top tips are that it has to be the dream of the pupil. It has to be what they really want more than just what their parents want. And then I advise them to not set their heart on one particular medical school or university right at the beginning. They need, to, they need to play a game, they need to apply strategically. So they need to look at their profile, their GCSEs, their UCAT, their A-levels, their extracurricular skills and characteristics, and they need to apply to places that fit that profile to maximise their chances of getting in. I've got many inspirations in medicine. I'm going to mention two. Um, and the first is our family GP. He's been our family GP for 14 years. He knows us by name without having to have the notes in front of him. I think he even knows our dog's name. And he, he knows and remembers what we've been to see him for before. He knows the conditions that we might, that we might have. The other aspiration at the moment is Professor Sarah Gilbert, and I suspect she's inspiration for a lot of people. So she was the lead researcher in the development of the, of the AstraZeneca vaccine for COVID. You look at her and you look at where top class education leads. So top class education leads to being able to develop a life saving, saving treatment on a global scale. And I think that's what we're starting here. You know, we're starting this education, this top class education, so that our pupils can go on and, and you know, maybe one day we'll produce another uh, Professor Sarah Gilbert.